Hi everybody, welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A. You know the concept by now. You ask the question down in the comment section underneath this video, and if you use the Ask Mark hashtag, I and the Scuba Diver Magazine subscribers answer your comment in the comment section so that you do get an answer as soon as possible. But in a week or two, I turn that question into a video like this one that might hopefully explain and answer your question a little bit better. Uh, today, I'm answering a question from Steve about swivel joints on hoses. So Steve says, I have set up a long hose primary donate configuration, thanks to you. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Uh, I was told by my local dive shop that it isn't a good idea to put a swivel on the short hose portion of my second stage that is on the necklace around my neck. He said that it was okay to use a 90, but a swivel is not good practice. Why is this? Ah, failure points. The uh, the scourge of well, scourge scourge of the diving regulator scene. So for some divers, every single O-ring and joint mechanism on a regulator is a potential failure point because it kind of is um, somewhere that can leak. And by adding a swivel joint, you're changing you're effectively changing a single O-ring into three. So. If you have a, uh, a standard just hose and drop and you connect that onto your second stage, there's, there's one O-ring on the inside of here and that's the sealing surface and that's pretty much it. If you then add a 90 degree elbow um, or 120 degrees if you want to get nasty, um, 90 is the, the more common one. You'll probably struggle to find a 120 nowadays. Um, you now add an extra O-ring in here. So we've got that additional O-ring, which now seals against the 90 degree elbow. And then you have an additional O-ring in here that seals. So you've added an extra failure point because in the unlikely event that one of those O-rings should go, you now have two chances of one of those O-rings going. When you add a swivel joint, I don't think I actually have one. Um, swivel joints are, in most circumstances, two like hemispheres, and it is very sim similar to this whole setup, except there's basically a, a separation in this part of the, uh, the elbow. And because there's two like hemispheres, they as they rotate, the hoses can just change whatever angle. I mean, Steve knows, I'm just explaining this for people who aren't Steve. Um, and because there's two separate parts, you have an extra O-ring in the middle to create that sealing surface. Um, unfortunately, that's a dynamic O-ring. Dynamic just means that something's basically like moving on it. And the problem is with that, you've got a higher risk of it uh, like just wearing, but also extruding. And I've seen this in the water where, because it's that, again, because it's two hemispheres, they're held together with a, uh, it's usually like a little grub screw that you have to tighten from time to time because as it twists and turns, sometimes that screw can start unscrewing itself. And it was probably about two minutes into the dive and I was swimming behind uh, this other diver and yeah, it just must have twisted and unscrewed enough so that air just started uh, venting through there. So it's a additional third failure point in that area. So what your dive center is basically trying to do is to minimize the failure points, um, but still have that kind of um, like fitting so that because your second stage, again, this is for the, the not Steve's, Steve already knows why um, the other uh, second stage is here. Go away. Um, if your second stage is in a necklace, it's gonna sit down here around your neck. And if the hose comes straight out, it kind of goes out at a janky angle. Whereas with a 90 degree elbow, as you can see, it kind of roots quite nicely just straight behind my neck and out of the way. Um, and then it can go straight in your mouth. With 120 degree, it comes off at a, a slightly easier angle, um, but they're quite hard to find nowadays. Um, so yeah, it mainly comes down to failure points. Um, 
bottom line, as long as you like maintain that swivel joint, it should be fine. Uh, it's just a matter of, yeah, keeping up on top of, keeping up on top of it, um, keeping on top of it, tightening that grub screw. If it's like an Omni swivel, they've upgraded the design. Um, it's true, a few years ago, they've probably upgraded it again since um, to make it harder for it to unscrew itself. Um, but as long as you just tighten it up, it's just like a little Allen key uh, on a grub screw and you just, eh, just tighten it up a bit. It might even be a flathead screwdriver thinking about it. I think I've seen pictures of that flathead. But anyway, it's quite easy. So at the beginning of the dive day, just nip it up a bit. It might make it a little bit stiffer, uh, but it will still rotate. Uh, it's just less likely to undo itself completely. Whereas with a 90 degree elbow, it's it's more of a static O-ring. Um, it doesn't do a great deal of movement, except if you are like proper twisting and turning that uh, that second stage. But uh, yeah, there, there's less less chance statistically of a an O-ring going when there's one fewer and that's really what they're uh, they're trying to do they're trying to help prevent a um yeah just a, an o-ring from extruding um but yeah failure points um welcome to the world of failure points where you scrutinize all of your equipment and you're trying to work out oh what could go wrong because literally from this hose you have two failure points you've got an o-ring there on the inlet uh you've got an o-ring there on the outlet um i mean technically you could look at the ferrules uh you could look at the entire hose itself as a, a failure point um so all you're trying to do is is minimize you can go from the sublime to the extreme but if you minimized all failure points you wouldn't have any scuba equipment uh so it's just mitigating that risk and just having sensible practical enough um whilst minimizing risk of yeah an o-ring blowing yeah everything about scuba diving really is calculated risks um and yeah swivel joints if they were dangerous they wouldn't make them uh it's just a matter of making sure that it's working properly and knowing how to diagnose if you start seeing a stream of bubbles coming from it it's probably best to get your alternate air source ready um, so that yeah, if the hose blows, you're ready to do some shutdown drills and, uh, and minimize the loss. But yeah, the, the, I'm gonna say there's nothing wrong with them as long as you do keep up with them. Um, it's just, yeah, technically you're, you're adding that third extra O-ring seal compared to just a fixed 90 degree out, uh, angle elbow and the, the benefit of that, like the hose can come out at any angle of a, um, uh, of like an omni swivel or similar swivel joint. Um, yeah, it is cool, but if you don't need absolutely every angle, then yeah, a 90 degree elbow uh, or 120 is, uh, is usually a lot cheaper and um, a little bit safer. Yeah, it's one of those things where I can't really tell you specifically do this. Um, it is one of those judgment calls that you have to do yourself as a diver. Um, would I use a, a an Omni swivel or similar swivel joint? Yeah, sure. Uh, it is really just, and I've said this seven times already, I know, just making sure that it's nice and tight um, and yeah, just maintaining those O-rings and, uh, and you should be perfectly fine. Um, any other questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, use this Ask Mark hashtag that will get you featured in an up and coming video. Um, otherwise, remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. Check us out on all our social media platforms. And if you're not subscribed to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel, of course, remember to subscribe. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.